Good evening, and welcome to the American Cathedral in Paris. My name is Zach Ullery, and I'm the canon for music. It's my pleasure to welcome you here this evening for our First Friday's virtual organ recital series. On the first Friday of every month, we will be joined by brilliant organists from around the world who at some point in their career were associated with the American Cathedral in Paris. Tonight, we travel to the United States of America where we will be joined by William Buteau, our former assistant musician here at the American Cathedral. Good evening. I'm Will Buteau. I'm the Minister of Music at Holy Trinity Episcopal Parish in Decatur, Georgia, and I was formerly the Assistant Organist and Choir Master at the American Cathedral. I am delighted and honored uh, to be a part of this fantastic organ series, uh, and I really hope you enjoy the program tonight. My program uh, is going to feature American composers in Paris, uh, American composers that spent some time in Paris and and whose experience in Paris really influenced their, their musical lives. You'll hear music from Copland, as well as Cole Porter and Gershwin, and maybe some others. Uh, so we hope you enjoy that. I was also asked to share some stories about my time in Paris, and maybe some entertaining stories about the organ uh, in particular. And I just want you all to know that it had always been my dream to live and work in Paris. Um, I would have done just about anything to move there, and when I ended up at the cathedral, um, I was over the moon. And to get to practice on such a wonderful, incredible, historic instrument um, was, was way beyond my dreams. Um, that was something that made a huge difference in my life and something that I'll never forget. Um, now, there were some funny things about that organ. It was certainly temperamental, um, it being an older instrument. Um, there were some things that came up. I remember there was a time when we had some issues with the sequencer, with the combination system, and the way that would manifest itself uh, was that all of the stops, and I mean all of them, would come on at the same time just randomly, just at random times. Um, so, of course, they would come on at the, the most inconvenient times. I remember uh, finding it out during communion, one time when I was playing something very quietly at a very soft moment in communion, and all the stops, including all the trumpets and everything, came on at once. And as you can imagine, that was quite a shock to the system. So I remember there were a few weeks as we were getting this fixed where uh, playing organ was a three-person job. One person to play organ and one person on each side to hold their hands in front of the stops and push them in if they would suddenly come out. Um, so I remember Ned Tipton and uh, Edmund Althouse um, on either side of me while I was playing for a couple of weeks. Um, but anyway, there are plenty more stories like that, but uh, well, that's one that, that pops into my head right away. In any case, I hope you enjoy this program. It's a short recital, um, and it should be fun and, and a little different tonight. So please enjoy.
That first piece was my transcription of Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man. Um, now, Copeland spent a little bit of time in Paris from about 1921 to 1925. Um, during that same time, uh, Cole Porter was also in Paris. He moved there about 1917 and stayed uh, till around the mid-30s, I believe. Um, and I'll never forget uh, going down to play on the Cole Porter piano there at the cathedral. That was a real treat. Um, so this piece and, and the next few that you're going to hear are uh, improvisations, are kind of my versions of, uh, of songs by these composers. Um, this next one is Night and Day. You may know that old Cole Porter tune. So enjoy Night and Day.
In the 1920s, another American composer came to visit Paris. George Gershwin, on his 1926 visit to Paris, was inspired to begin sketches for An American in Paris, one of his most famous pieces. I picked one of my favorite Gershwin pieces. Um, I'm doing an arrangement of Someone to Watch Over Me, one of my favorite tunes.
The famous jazz trumpeter Miles Davis traveled to Paris in 1949 as part of a quintet and he was blown away. He was 22 years old at the time. He was blown away um, by how different things were there. Um, in the U.S. he was facing segregation and discrimination and it was a very different story when he moved over there to Paris for that tour. He fell in love. Some of his band members even stayed in France and did not return to the U.S. for a while. Um, he did, but he kept coming back. Um, Paris held a special place in his heart. So I'm going to play uh, a version of a tune from his album, uh, Kind of Blue. Um, this song is called So What? Hope you enjoy this.
Rock legend Jim Morrison of The Doors moved to Paris in 1971. At that time in his life, he was facing a lot of drug and alcohol issues, um, leading a very stressful life, and he came to Paris in search of a chance to clean up, in search of a chance to start new, um, and his experience there blew him away. Um, and as many of you know, he's, he's buried there in Paris. Uh, I picked one of my favorites uh, to play tonight, or at least to attempt to play on the organ, um, Riders in the Storm. And as you might be able to hear, the storm has just started here. Um, and at the end of it, listen carefully, you might hear a little quote of uh, The End, another Jim Morrison song, so that you know that it's the end of the recital. Listen, I'm so glad you all joined us. Thank you for tuning in, um, and thank you for listening tonight. Um, it's been a real pleasure. Take care, and I hope you enjoy this last Jim Morrison song. <laughs>